All right, so what we're going to do, we've got a system we're going to add a repeater to. So it's CatMax system. We've had several of those where we want to expand those, add repeaters to the system. Well, the great thing is you don't have to reprogram all your subscribers once you add that repeater into the system. As long as it's not a control channel capable or control channel flagged repeater, uh, the new channel information will be sent out over the air automatically once you get it all set up. So, so let's see what we got. So we've got this system here. Uh, it's just a small system, kind of a demo one that we've set up. We've actually got two repeaters. We've already read these in. So uh, first step that we kind of wrote out is you want to get your repeater read in, and you want to repeat read it in and generate a config so you'll you'll want to add that repeater in there serial number uh, schedule that read job and you want to generate a config it's up to you to add it uh, to have it added to the repeater or just go ahead and generate the config and put it in your config list so what we did here is we don't have a configuration selected or a configuration wasn't automatically added to the to the two repeaters we read in. Matter of fact, we haven't even changed aliases here. Uh, we've just read them in and they were already assigned to ID 5 and 6. So anyway, so we're looking at 02170206. Go to Manage and Configs just so you can see those. Uh, 0206, 0207. So you'll see the product families kind of letting you know that they are MTR 3000 repeaters and they are not assigned to radio. So Anyway, so we've read those two guys in. Uh, they're obviously going to be five and six when we're done. So first thing I've got on here, we're going to go to uh, set view. So I'm going to go down and go to manage sets. Pretty sure. Let's see. We're kind of kind of fumbling through this. Uh, let's see. CatMax systems here. And this specific system is labeled Chevron Phillips. So we're going to double click it, go to edit. And it kind of a kind of a bug here puts you at the bottom of the screen. So we're going to scroll back to the top. So we're looking at the CatMax system here. All of its information. Uh, we're going to go down to sites. Let's see if we can find this guy. Oops. Here we go. We're going to get there in a minute. CatMax sites. So we've got a four sites set up in here with the OTAP, the VRC, and the MNIS data. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick site one. Let me just scroll through to kind of double check your adjacent sites just to show the remaining things here. So we're going to go to site one, and we're going to double click or just go to edit either way. This is a single site system, so you can see the seven channels. We, we've uh, We've already added in our two channels here. So what you're going to do if your channels are not in here, so if, so we've kind of done some pre-work on this specific system for testing, but uh, originally you would only have a 4 and a 7. We're going to bring the 5 and 6 in, so you're going to hit the plus. But uh, what we're going to do, we're going to double-click, say 5, just to show you what would happen if you hit the plus channel. So you're going to hit the plus. That's going to kind of bring you to where you're going to do your data fill here. Uh, this is where you're going to set up your actual channel name, what you want to call it, right? Uh, what type of channel? Obviously, we're going to do a trunk channel here. It's going to be a voice. voice. Uh, we're going to use the fixed data plan. We are not going to make this a control channel capable, right? you got a few grayed out things. You can leave those guys along up to you on the preference. We're going to leave ours at uh, the highest. So two of the biggest things here, right, is going to be your color code. So you're going to need to know that up front, what your color code of your system is going to be. Ours, this specific system is 13, because this will obviously come back and bite you in the butt. Uh, biggest thing here is the physical channel ID. So as you adjust the channel ID, this is where you're going to see your frequency changes here, right? So this specific channel... Uh, it's going to be a received frequency 815, 4125, and 860, 4125. So as you adjust this guy, so let me show you what happens here. So 753, you'll notice I changed 754. We've got a change here, right? Frequency change. So let me move the mouse here so you can kind of see what's going to happen. So 
what you're going to do is you're going to obviously adjust that based off of what frequency that you want to add in. So one of, one of our UHF systems that we've added recently, uh, we added in a repeater to a, a multi-site system. So it was a fifth repeater into a system. So when we went to add our channel in, our physical ID for that one ends up being, uh, for an example, physical ID of 1554, which corresponded to 464-2875, 469-2875. So anyway, that's just an example to show how that physical ID is associated directly to the repeater frequencies. And, and those are all laid out in the channel plan. And again, what, what ends up happening is uh, when these channels are added, the control channel just tells the radio, hey, go to physical channel ID 753. And then the radio knows this is the channel that it needs to go to for, for the call or for the voice traffic, whatever the traffic may be. So I'm going to close this guy out. So again, in a new, in a new add-in, uh, you're just going to do the plus here. You're going to go through what, what we just went through. So the kicker is once you do this and you close and get out now in this case we've already added it i tell you what for, for the giggles of it let's go ahead and do a plus we're going to add in a um, a channel eight for the fun of it here uh, double click it uh, let's change this sucker in here we're going to play with him we're going to put him color code what do we say 13 physical id i don't know for giggles 765 okay we're not going to make it control channel capable and trunk channel 8 boom 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 we're good we're going to save it so what this is going to do is going to tell us hey look you're making a change you're fixing a change to push this change to these sets so what it's going to do is you're about to flag all of your radios in your database basically so if we close this out you see we just added in channel 8 right we're going to go back to radio view so now at this point you've just flagged all of your radios in your system. So if you've got a large system, uh, they're going to be flagged. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, these are repeaters, so that's why we're not seeing the flags here. So let's go to all. So it's just going to show us our our radios that, that we've got here. Now again, this system only has three radios, right? With the exception of these guys, they do not have configurations attached to them, so they're not going to show flag because we haven't assigned a config that has that system. So anyway, these three guys, right, this guy was already flagged, but these two were not previous to the to the add-in. Boom, these guys are modified, they're changed. So if you've got 2,000 radios and we had a recent system similar, you're, uh, you're going to sit here for a while because it's going to go through, it's going to start flagging all of your radios for a change. Matter of fact, what, what may even happen is you're going to get the yellow squares all across your database saying, hey, we're making a database synchronization change. Just kind of hang tight, and it could take a while. I think I think that change took us about at least 30 minutes, and it was I don't know 800 radio, something like that. So anyway, so so the next step we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and do an edit on these two configs that we've read in, right? So the best way to do this, I'm not going to say it's the best, the way we want to do it, is we're going we're gonna to edit this from the configuration level. So we haven't assigned it to the radio yet. We're going to go to the config. So, I have a sh bad short term here, so let's run back. So 217 is going to be repeater 5, just for my mental reference. So we're going to go to 217. We're going to just do an edit config. And he's going to pop up. So here's where we're going to want to go through and actually do our com our configuration level edit is the way we want to call that. So we're going to add that CapMax system in the here. So let's click on this bad boy. We're going to go. We're going to add him in. So this is only only one system or one site. Let me scroll back up to this guy here. You know what? Let's. Uh, I think we got a better way to do this. Discard. We're gonna do right and select existing set. That's gonna work out better for us. And just click that. Hit OK.
boom, now he's in there. That's the way to do that. Uh, it's incorrect trying to dig into it. So just do a right click and um, select existing. You're going to select that one that pops up. Boom, puts him in there. So now for a channel assignment, uh, let's just double click him. So right now we only have a digital personality. We're going to do plus. We're going to go down and add in a capacity max personality. Hit OK. And we're actually going to want to drag. Let's move him up. We're not going to be able to drag here. I'm going to put him up. And then we're going to kind of go through our standard channel edits here. Call him channel. I think we're channel 5 on this guy. Gonna make sure you've got a few things you want to put in here. Um, timeout timer, those types of deals. Now we're gonna need to go in here and select our system, Chevron Phillips, and the CPC PAC was actually that site. And again, you can, you're not gonna be able to assign this repeater to a data gateway VRC or app, so it's gonna only allow you to select that there. Capacity max channel. So we've already pre-built these channels in here. Um, or I'm sorry, actually that's that's when we added them in, in here earlier. So you, you have the new 8 that I'd added. So we're going to select 5 for this guy, channel 5. So it's going to take all the information we added earlier and then uh, populate that automatically. So this isn't where you go in and actually put in your physical channel numbers and all that. That's going to be back what we did earlier. Kind of some of the basic stuff there. So we're going to hit save. Let's kind of get him going. Pretty sure we're just about done. You do have your general settings for the repeater. So if you've got settings, you need to go in here and change as far as power levels. Uh, that can all obviously come back and get you if you've got your power throttled back for whatever reasons. Uh, CWID, those types of deals. Um, Again, that's something that can come back and bite you depending on if uh, you've throttled for CWID reasons or call sign reasons. Or just to have a balanced system. You know, your low power settings, just your normal stuff here. No, nothing fancy. Uh, same thing with accessories. Again, you know, most of our stuff is pretty, pretty default here. Uh, security level things. Not really. That. Most of the stuff doesn't apply to Cat Max. The network settings are going to be are going to get uh, assigned based off that cap max system. So I don't believe we're going to need to worry about these guys. Link establishment. Uh, really the best the best thing to do is uh, just jump back to a previous repeater, right? Take screenshots of that guy. Come in here and then match them up based off of that. I don't have any of that in front of me, so I'm just going to kind of run through these. I believe we're all good here. So again, just any of these things you need to go back and through, go back through and double check. Should be pretty good. Um, again, what we can do um, is let's go ahead and close him out. Let's run back to our configuration view. You know, open up, open up a uh, current repeater that you've got running. Again, this is for adding in a new channel. It's kind of the way we're doing this kind of look back here just just to see if there's anything you need to go back in actually DACP I f did forget about that we're gonna want to make sure in DACP this guy because he's gonna get his assignment from the from the system my link establishment is gonna be there I think security's basically dumb down nothing there yep so I do need to catch that so let's go back to configuration view we were working with five I think 217 was repeater five Let's see if I got that. Yep. So we're going to hit our network settings. DHCP. Save that bad boy. Make sure you do have a repeater IP programming enabled. That's going to be need, need to be there for programming that guy through the system. Should be pretty good there. Pretty confident that's the majority of things. Again, that could be specific to your system. So, 
we could go we could go ahead and select our config and apply it to our repeater so what what i do like to do is say this is 217 it's the guy we've been working on what i want to do is go back to manage configs i'm going to rename 217's config now that we've done that let's make his naming convention follow what we've previously done rp tr and we're going to say that's five i'm going to leave him i'm going to leave 206 alone because we haven't completed that yet so now we can go back and apply that config all right select config come on repeater five bam So we're going to red box there because we haven't enabled the cap max feature for this guy. So what you'll notice here should see it. You're going to see these these actual two that we read in do not have the feature enabled. So before we can write to him, we're going to need to get that um, feature set up. So quick way to run that down and again I don't believe we've set up with internet here so what we're gonna do we're just gonna just gonna kind of go through the motion so we're gonna go to manage licenses and we're gonna go to uh, radio licenses so what you do here you're gonna add this license in dump that EID in there uh, for whatever you've got that you're enabled enabling right you can query it if you want uh, pop it up in there actually query it's gonna gonna populate it's gonna show your available radios you should see that repeater pop up in there All right you're just gonna click the add it's gonna go to there you're gonna go to register and then you should have just uh, enabled that feature in that radio so at that point what you'll have is your red box will go away so one of the reasons we want to edit that configuration earlier at the config level is so you can set up all the cat max stuff if you try to apply that to this radio early on and then go in to the configuration you're not going to have the capability to add in the uh the cat max personality and the data fields there for uh, for cat max so that's why you want to edit it from the configuration level all those features are there by default since you're doing it in configuration mode and then at the end, apply it to the repeater. And then from there, you'll go and enable that feature if the device hasn't been enabled yet. So anyway, so that would normally go away, obviously, after the CapMax enablement. So you should be good, I believe, to write at that point to that radio. Now, a couple of the things that's going to catch us here that we're going to want to fix or get to, and this does kind of catch me, is we're going to go to System View. And we're going to have a little issue here. You're going to say, oh, got us some device ID problems here. So what we're going to want to do is take this repeater 5. And again, this, this has ca caught us in the, in the past. Is You're going to want to make that device ID 5 for that repeater. Uh, now, that does depend on how you're doing your sites, things like that. Um, you know, what your ID is going to be. But obviously, it can't be device ID 1 because you already have a 1. So that's going to be a, a, a conflict there. Let's see. I want to say we do have there's an IP system set that we need to go back and do. That's kind of a big kicker. So this guy's a gotcha. I want to make sure you do there. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get there. Manage. Oops. Manage IP system settings. And in the repeaters, let's double click this guy. And take a look at it. I think we've already set this up. We have, oh man, what, what, there's a gotcha here. I got a, oh man, this is going to kind of get me. Let's do a right click from here, I believe. There we go. Select IP system settings. Cause that, that's our two gotchas. Once you, you're going to need to make sure and select the repeaters that's that's your, your two options you were seeing earlier your repeater is the only thing going to pop up so you have to set that that's going to actually be where the repeater is going to get its system settings ip system settings so and now if we go back to manage ip system settings you should see that you've got six here now that are in use 
So again, this is where the DHCP side is going to come in on how the system assigns the um, IP address and everything to the repeater. So uh, in all actuality, we should be good to go here with the exception. Obviously, we don't have CapMax enabled on this repeater. So we'd want to do that first. That red box should go away. You know, a little bit of house cleaning here. You want to probably do that before because this uh, is going to reflag it if you don't do this ahead of time. But just for cleanliness, we're going to make this look nice and pretty. PA repeater 5. So this guy looks good to go here. We are good to write. Let this thing catch up with me. I'm going to let this thing got this guy right, and we should be good to go. You know, um, pretty simple. We've got most of these steps listed out pretty good. Again, there's a couple things you can go and do in different orders. But for the most part, that's about the order that, that we want to do them. I think the easiest. Again, you can do things out of order. But, uh, but I think that's the best order that we've come up with to do them. Uh, kind of doing that configuration level edit early um, and then going to sign in that last that's the one that can kind of kind of get you and get you hung up and again those two big kickers are the uh, are selecting the IP system settings here again that's bit us a bit us at least once uh, as well as making sure you go to the um, system view here and making sure that you re address that ID uh, the good thing is it won't let you write because you've got that duplicate ID, so that that is that can catch you from actually you know doing any hosing something up. But the uh, the other big thing is you can write with that IP system settings not selected, and that that that'll that'll cause you some issues. So you want to make sure you get that done. But but really really that's it. So I uh, hope this helps. There's probably a lot of questions <laughs> from uh, from this tutorial here. Uh, but again, hopefully, hopefully it helps out.